In this video, we will study about the flexor retinaculum present at the wrist and also we will study about the structures which are present in the palm. First about the flexor retinaculum. So here we can see this band of deep fascia just anterior to the carpal bones. This is the flexor retinaculum. Now these some structures they pass superficial to the flexor retinaculum and in this dissection we can see the structures. The yellow color this is the ulnar nerve and this red color this is the ulnar artery. So these two structures the ulnar nerve and ulnar artery they are passing superficial to flexor retinaculum. And other structures we can see here this is the tendon of palmaris longus which is passing superficial to flexor retinaculum. Now this flexor retinaculum along with the concavity of the carpal bones it forms a tunnel that is the carpal tunnel. So if we lift these flexor tendons we can see this deep tunnel that is the carpal tunnel between the flexor retinaculum and these are carpal bones. And the structures which are passing deep to the flexor retinaculum or through the carpal tunnel which we have lifted. First is this tendon of flexor digitorum superficialis. So here we can see the flexor digitorum superficialis which has divided into four for the medial four digits. Then median nerve which and the third structure this is the flexor digitor tendon of flexor digitorum profundus. And the last structure which we can see passing through the carpal tunnel it is the tendon of flexor pollicis longus. So here are the structures, first is the flexor digitorum superficialis, then median nerve, flexor digitorum profundus and the tendon of flexor pollicis longus which will pass through the carpal tunnel formed between the flexor retinaculum and the carpal bones. Now we will study about the intrinsic muscles of the hand and also the long flexor tendons which are passing in the palm. First about the muscles which are present on which are the thinner muscles. So there are three thinner muscles on the lateral side and one thinner muscle it is present on the medial side of the thumb. First the lateral thinner muscles. First muscle which we can see which is lateral most this is the abductor pollicis brevis. So here we can see this abductor pollicis brevis taking origin from the flexor retinaculum and the scaphoid bone and being inserted onto the radial surface of the base of proximal phalanx. Now medial to this, the second muscle in the thinner group, it is the flexor pollicis brevis, which is also inserted onto the radial side of base of proximal phalanx. So abductor pollicis brevis, flexor pollicis brevis. Now the third muscle we can see by reflecting the abductor pollicis and flexor pollicis brevis and which is attached directly to the shaft of first metacarpal this is the opponent's pollicis muscle. So this muscle will take origin from flexor retinaculum and trapezium bone and it will be inserted onto the radial side of the shaft of first metacarpal. So these are the three thinner muscles present on the lateral side of the thumb abductor pollicis brevis flexor pollicis brevis and opponent's pollicis. Now the fourth muscle for the thumb it is the adductor pollicis and it is present on the ulnar side of the thumb. So here we can see this muscle having a transverse head and an oblique head and both the heads of adductor pollicis they will join and they will be inserted onto the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx. So this is the only thinner muscle present on the medial side and only thinner muscle which will be supplied by the ulnar nerve. So these are the muscles present over the thinner eminence or the thinner muscles. Now we will study about the hypothinner muscles. The hypothinner muscles, the medial most muscle, this is the abductor digiti minimi inserted onto the medial side of the base of proximal phalanx of the little finger. Then lateral to this we have the second muscle this is the flexor digiti mini, minimi which is also inserted on the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx. So abductor digiti minimi, flexor digiti minimi 
and the third muscle which is attached to the shaft of the fifth metacarpal and lying deep to these two muscles this is the opponens digiti minimi so these are the three hypothenar muscles and a small hypothenar muscle here we on the we can see this is the palmaris brevis muscle so this palmaris brevis it will also take origin from the flexor retinaculum and it will be inserted onto the skin on the ulnar side of the palm so these are the four muscles for the hypothenar group now we will study the structures which are present in the center of the palm here we can see the first the long flexor tendons and first tendon which we will see after reflecting the palmar aponeurosis this is the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis so here we can see the four tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis now when we reflect the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis we can see the tendons of deep muscles of the flexors of the forearm and these are the first is this flexor pollicis longus and then we can see the four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus so these are the four tendons of flexor digitorum profundus muscle now the muscles which are attached to the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus these are the lumbrical muscles so all the lumbricals we can see they are attached to the radial side of the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus so here we can see the first then second third and the fourth lumbrical and we can also see that the first and second lumbrical they are unipinnate while the third and the fourth lumbricals they are bipinnate so these are the structures which are present in the center of the palm first was the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis then tendons of flexor digitorum profundus along with lumbrical muscles and this is the tendon of flexor pollicis longus now if we reflect all these tendons the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and the profundus muscle then we enter into the palmar spaces these palmar spaces they are formed because of arrangement of fascia in the palm and there are two main palmar spaces before studying these spaces in the dissection we will just look at this diagram and try to revise the boundaries of these palmar spaces so this is a cross section of the right hand and here we can see the skin superficial fascia palmar aponeurosis deep to the palmar aponeurosis we have the palmar arch and deep to this palmar arch we can see the tendons of long flexor tendons first are the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis then we can see the tendons of flexor digitorum profundus and deep to this these tendons we have the spaces first this is on the medial side we can see the mid palmar space and on the lateral side we can see the thinner space and both these spaces they are separated by an intermediate palmar septum so these long flexor tendons they will form the anterior boundaries of these spaces and posterior boundaries of these spaces they will be formed by a fascia which is covering the introsciae and the introsciae muscles and the metacarpal bones while in the thinner space the posterior boundary it will be formed by a fascia which is covering the adductor pollicis muscle now we will see these two spaces mid palmar and the thinner space in the dissection so here we have reflected the tendons of flexor digitorum superficialis and the profundus and now we have entered into a space this is the mid palmar space and posterior boundary of mid palmar space it is formed by these fascia which is covering the introsciae muscles and the metacarpal bones so this is the mid palmar space which is being separated from the thinner space by this intermediate palmar septum now we will look at the boundaries of the thinner space so here we can see the anterior boundary of the thinner space it will be formed by the long flexor tendons which are passing to the index finger first flexor digitorum superficialis then profundus and this is the anterior boundary and tendon of flexor pollicis longus it will also form the anterior boundary of the thinner space and posterior boundary of the thinner space it will be formed by this adductor pollicis muscle 
so these are the two spaces in the palm a mid palmer and a thinner space deep to the flexor tendons now the deepest structure which we can see in the palm are the introsciae muscle present between the metacarpal bones on the palmer side we have the palmer introsciae there are total four palmer introsciae out of which three are visible here first is this second palmer introsciae then we can see this third palmar introsciae and this one is the fourth palmar introsciae all the palmar introsciae they are unique pinnate in nature now if we look at the dorsal side of the hand we can see the dorsal introsciae so here we can see all the dorsal introsciae and all are bipinnate in nature first is this first dorsal introsciae we can see that it is inserted onto the lateral side of the index finger then we can see the on either side of middle finger we can see the second and also we can see the third dorsal introsciae this one is the fourth dorsal introsciae present between the fourth and the fifth metacarpal bones so there are four palmar four dorsal introsciae all are bipinnate in nature